We have three bright regions in Earth view, and one is on the way. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. The sun is definitely brightening our day this week. As we take a look at the Earth view, you can see, bam, 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 there are three bright regions at high latitudes in Earth view. These are solar cycle 25 bright regions. In fact, one of them, region 2770, is actually a pretty large sunspot. You can actually see it in white light. And that's a good news in terms of the activity ramping up for solar cycle 25. It's also good news in terms of the the solar flux because it, we are boosted back up into the mid 70s and this means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders so enjoy that on top of that as we take a look at the east limb you can also see some bright fuzz that's going to be rotating into earth view and it may boost the solar flux just a tiny bit but probably not too much we're going to have to wait until yet a larger bright region in the south rotates into earth view and probably about two or three days so maintain a watch for that meanwhile we also have another kind of remnant coronal hole that's rotating into the earth strike zone this is not going to be expected to give all that much we could get a little bit of aurora down to high latitudes probably not much though at mid latitudes so your aurora photographers you're going to have to stay on your toes if you're at high latitudes to be able to catch a bit of a show Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, as you can see from the X-ray flux, we're actually a bit boosted a bit over flatline. Oh my goodness, we actually have a little bit of activity to report. You can see back on August 3rd, we actually had a couple B-class flares. This is from those regions that are on Earth, the Earth-facing disk, and they're continuing to kind of fizzle and fart just a little bit. And even when we hit August 8th, look at that. Oh my goodness, a C-class flare. When was the last time we saw a C-class flare? So I'm beginning to get a little bit excited. This was from region 2770, of course, and that this means that if you are an amateur radio operator or emergency responder and you hear a little sizzling on the bands or a little bit of noise, no, it's not your rig. It's just the sun beginning to wake up. Switching to our solar storm conditions, over the past week, we've been pretty much between unsettled conditions and quiet conditions, except about midday on the second, wham, we got hit by this unexpected burst of fast solar wind. Now we knew the coronal hole that was uh, so giving us that fast solar wind was coming, but we just thought it was too far north. Even the official predictions didn't expect the intensity of the fast solar wind that we got, but it was a wonderful kind of surprise because by the third, look at that, it brought us to active conditions and actually gave us a little bit of aurora, cleared down to mid-latitudes, and it did it again around the fourth. We got another big little burst of active conditions, which was just wonderful, a very nice surprise during this reasonably solar minimum sun. Meanwhile, the, after that, things kind of quieted down and we're now back to our unsettled to quiet conditions. And even though we do have a remnant coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next couple days, we aren't expecting anything like the show that we got back on the 3rd and the 4th. So you Aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could expect to see a show, but you mid-latitude photographers, don't expect all that much from this one. It's probably just going to keep us at unsettled. And just as I promised in my last solar storm forecast, we had so many gorgeous Aurora field reporter photos that I just couldn't show all of them. And this was during that last big solar storm we had back in the end of July. So I just wanted to show the rest of them because they've just been so gorgeous, especially with Neowise in the background in some of these. So here's some beautiful photos like this in Ontario. An aurora was seen all over Manitoba, Canada. You can see it in many places. And I've even gotten even more photos since then. And it was also seen in many parts in Saskatchewan. Canada's so lucky, aren't they? And it was also seen all over Alberta, Canada. But you know what? Don't cut the United States out. We actually had a few shots that dipped down into the United States. Here's one from Ohio at Lake Erie. And we also had some shots in Michigan.
So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A, staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look at the sun in Stereo's view, what do you see? Bam, bam, bam. See those three regions? Those are the regions that have rotated into Earth view, and so Stereo's seeing them from the side. But take a look at the east limb in Stereo's view, especially in the southern hemisphere. Do you see that on the fifth? Whammo, right there. That was a solar storm that was launched. So that region that's rotating into Stereo's view now is actually quite active. Meanwhile, we have yet another kind of a fuzzy region. Not too much activity there, but that could be boosting the solar flux as it continues to rotate into Earth view. And we have another region in the north. So my goodness, things are beginning to get kind of active, don't you think? And it's wonderful news because this means that the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders will continue to stay in the margin range on our stay side and we might have a potential solar storm generator here rotating into earth view in about the next maybe three or four days so your war photographers you have something to look forward to switching to our moon we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon and by the 15th the moon will still be about 20 percent illuminated so you night sky watchers if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky you're going to have this bright companion so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting that remnant coronal hole to rotate into the Earth strike zone over the next couple days and send us maybe a few pockets of fast solar wind. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of active conditions over the next couple days. But expect that to be kind of sporadic here and there and not to last all that long. Now at mid latitudes, we're expecting normal to unsettled conditions, but only about a 10% chance of active conditions but most likely it's going to be pretty normal so your war photographers if you're at high latitude you could expect to get maybe a little bit of a show maybe a bit fleeting at mid latitude i imagine you're just going to have to sit this one out Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have region 2770 on the Earth-facing disk. It is a sunspot, but it has only been firing B and C class flares. So you GPS users, there is no risk for radio blackouts right now, and that should make you very happy. However, this region plus several other regions have been boosting the solar flux. We are back into the mid uh, 70s for solar flux which means marginal radio propagation on earth's day side and it's likely going to continue that way so amateur radio operators and emergency responders should rejoice because we have a lot of bright regions on the sun's far side that are going to be rotating into earth view and likely keeping that solar flux in the 70s so enjoy now also because we still are trying to come out of solar minimum the cosmic ray flux is still a lot higher than we would like it to be so you frequent flyers, and this does include uh, air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely brightening everyone's day. We have multiple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk that are boosting that solar flux into the mid-70s, and that means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. On top of that, we do have bright region 2770. This is a sunspot, and it is firing a few B and C class flares. So you radio operators, don't worry if you're hearing a little bit of whistle and farts on the bands that is not your rig that's just the sun waking up so don't don't worry about it too much now aurora photographers well we do have a remnant coronal hole that's rotating into the earth strike zone but likely it's not going to be sending much in the way of fast solar wind it could bring aurora down to high latitudes but you mid latitude aurora photographers will, will likely need to sit this out and just kind of wait hopefully for that other bright region that's going to be rotating into earth view here pretty 
pretty soon and it could be firing some solar storms for us so we'll keep some fingers crossed now you gps users well you know what the solar flux is beginning to boost a little bit and sometimes that makes things a little dicey at low latitudes but we don't have any solar storms right now so overall as long as you stay away from that dawn dust terminator and you know just kind of think about low latitudes in and around the day side you gps reception should be pretty good i'm tamitha scove the space weather woman thank you for watching